Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. This fight did not disappoint. It was huge. It was a huge fight. Um, let me know what you thought about this whole card, 257, um, because I'm going to be making videos all week on all these fights. But um, Conor McGregor, he did start off this fight really good. He won the first round, okay? Dustin Poirier had a lot of adversity, and you know, it just shows how how he was saying, Dustin Poirier was saying in the interview, like, I connected my mind to my body and, like, I'm all aligned now because it's like, he's not even thinking about what happened, you know? He's not allowing those demons, you know, which I talked about a lot in the other video, but, like, when you're, when you're, like, fighting someone now, again, you know, for the rematch, you know, maybe all of these things are going to play in his mind of how he lost, you know? And he's going to have, like, those inner demons, right? Which he didn't have, you know? And it just shows how mentally strong this guy is. And he was even saying that, you know, he just looked at, he just looked at, at, at uh, Connor just like a human being, you know, just like I was saying, he needs to look at him just like another guy in front of him that I, that he has to defeat. And he was saying that, but he wasn't feeling Conor McGregor's presence. He wasn't feeling his aura, you know, because Conor McGregor is such a character. He's such a, he's such an energy. I can only imagine when he walks into a room what he does to a room in terms of like his energy and what he brings um he's just that like that big personality and and he he's come from like so low and he just you know blossomed into this person and like he's so like self-made and it's just like that just comes with so much energy you know if you know people like that that just so, um, yeah, so honestly, I think Conor McGregor, what is there for Conor McGregor now? Because Conor McGregor is committed to fighting a lot more because, you know, the inactivity is really what he is using as the excuse of why he lost his fight, which, you know, that's fair. That's fair. Um, he won the first round, right? But then those leg kicks, okay? And then Dustin Poirier is boxing, of course. So, um, and that's not taking anything away from Dustin. Listen, Dustin... What he does in the octagon, but also what he does outside of the octagon, I mean, this guy is incredible, huge fan. But I think what's going to happen with Dustin, Dustin is the champ, technically, I feel like he's the champ, technically he's not, right? Technically, Habib is still the champ, but I think that Habib is going to relinquish the belt, Dustin is going to be the champ. Who does he fight? Possibly, you know, like I said, Oliveira or Michael Chandler, whoever wins that fight, you know? Um, you have to have Michael Chandler versus Oliveira first, and then whoever wins that fight goes to fight Dustin Poirier for the belt. That does makes perfect that makes perfect sense, you know. Um, or you know we have we have Nate Diaz kind of in the mix. We have um, I mean Max Holloway even, but you know listen it's craziness. Okay, this this division is just so stacked with talent. It's just craziness um but what michael chandler did to i mean what he did to dan hooker i would like to see him versus dustin poirier and they have such a mutual respect for each other um you know they're both american i mean they they're both dads they both speak so well and they're both um you know they they want to do bigger things they want to make an impact to the world with their platforms so there's, there's like not really a loser there, but um, I think Dustin, at the end of the day, I think Dustin's going to get it done just with his experience in the UFC and just, he's just getting so much better, you know, so much better. I mean, to conquer, not only to conquer Conor McGregor and just what that must feel like, but to conquer it in the way that he did with so much respect, giving like the hot sauce, you know, like honestly, like he, he didn't seem bothered you know, he didn't have like those inner demons coming out. You know, he was saying that he didn't like the lead up to it because, you know, it's like the whole world is watching. You got all these people doubting you. Um, you know, he was getting booed when he was walking in, in, you know, to the octagon. And then, you know, it's like how much can one human being take, right? And there's that added pressure, you know, even though you aren't um, wearing the blue gloves, you know, you still have that added pressure because this person has a win over you, you know? It's like, like I said, like if I beat you once, I'll beat you twice, right? It's like you kind of have like that, 
self-doubt that will probably come in because you know he already lost to him and he's just like well i'm probably gonna lose again and it's just like no you're not you know the thing though is that the thing though is that if they fight the third time right the trilogy fight and connor you know doesn't have the ring rust like he's saying what happens you know because a lot of like connor doesn't get a lot of the credit right he gets a lot of the credit with his mouth but in the way that he walks the walk and to uh, talk the talk but like his fighting IQ, he's just, he has that precision, you know, what he did to Dustin Poirier in the first round was really impressive. Um, and let's see what happens because that's, that's the beauty of trilogies, you know, it's one and one. Let's see the third one is, is going to be the deciding factor. But, um, yeah, this, this, I really like what's happening now that Connor is back. It just brings so much <laughs> like he's so good for mma he's so good for the sport like win or lose or draw he's so good um and connor was saying so many interesting things too um but you know like habib i don't there's no way habib is gonna come back to fight connor maybe like i said in another video maybe he maybe habib is gonna come back to fight michael chandler or like maybe the Poria, but it doesn't seem like he wants to fight people that he already beat you know, which makes sense. He's like, Habib is like, you know, I already have their head on my desk, you know, sort of thing. Like, but maybe, you know, he hasn't fought um, Michael Chandler or Charles Oliveira. So maybe, you know, he's going to see that fresh meat and he's going to be like, you know what? It's been a few months. It's been a year. Let me go in and fight these guys that I've never fought before. You know, Charles Oliveira or Michael Chandler. Because I think that would like spark his, his, um, his like hunger again to like go back in there and do it, you know? But I think Dustin Poirier is definitely going to relinquish the belt too. Like he's, he's going to hold the belt. I mean, like for like maybe like maybe like one title defense and then he's going to retire, I think. You know, because even like looking at watching the interview, you know, he didn't enjoy a lot of it. He was saying he only enjoyed the actual fight, you know. Um, but like all the media and all the people talking, cause you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve and like, he doesn't want to deal with all of that stuff, you know? And it is exhausting. Like, I know for me, like being an introvert, like it is exhausting just to hear all the noise around you, you know, it's like literally draining of your energy. So, you know, he doesn't want to go through that. So maybe he, you know, he gets the belt, he gets a taste of the belt again. Cause obviously he was the interim champ, right? And he enjoyed that. And then, you know, obviously what happened happened with Habib. Um, he got, you know, defeated by Habib, but maybe he goes out on good terms, you know, in terms of like, he wants to get the belt and then retire, you know, like that, like retire on a win, you know, retire on a title defense of the belt. I mean, you know, so, cause that's like the best way to retire, you know, and then he can focus on, you know, all of the things he has going for him, you know, his, all of his charity work. He wants to have another child, um, you know, he's so invested as being a father, his hot sauce, like he has lots of things that he, he's doing, you know, so I think that's what Dustin is going to do. Um, yeah, and then uh, Connor, I think he's going to want to, he's going to want to do this a little bit more. He looks like he's really invested um, and he wants to, I think also fighting really keeps him out of trouble, you know, I think he's the type that, you know, wants to kind of. You know, he needs to stay busy and he needs that like physical relief, physical like, you know, expression, you know, like just letting it out of your body every time, like just defeating someone or getting defeated and having that fuel you fuel you to go back in there, you know. But I think if he stays like stagnant and doesn't fight, that's when he wants to start, you know, punching old guys in a bar and like all this stuff. So um, so yeah, I think fighting is really good for him. He's going to stay out of trouble, but then also he's going to make so much money. I think he made like, what, like $5 million? Was that it? No. Was it $5 million? And then Dustin made a million dollars? No, it had to be more than that. Because I feel like, I feel like, isn't that like chump change for him? He's like, I tipped that money. I tipped that money. Um, before I end the video, let me know in the comments who you think McGregor should fight next and who Dustin should fight next. Like I said, Dustin, I think, should fight either Oliveira or Michael Chandler, whoever wins, right? And then for Connor, definitely RDA. I, I loved their interaction, you know, and then it didn't happen, right? 
or he fights Nate Diaz. But like the RDA, I just think is so fun. You know, he does like RDA has that win over Paul Felder. I'm pretty sure if they fight, I think Connor will win. Um, and then the Nate Diaz one, I think maybe Nate Diaz will win. But the thing is, is Nate Diaz has been out for so freaking long too. Um, but at the same time, like so has Connor. You know. Um, he does have this fight, but you know, and then the cowboy fight was the cowboy fight was only like 40 seconds. Um, so, so yeah, but either way, either way, like Connor, you know, I was thinking like Connor could fight Dan Hooker, but I don't think it would happen. Um, I just don't think it would happen. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments who you think because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different ways this can go. You know, we have Tony Ferguson there, you know, which, like I said, I think Dan Hooker should fight Tony. We have Justin Gaethje. We have, we have so many guys in this division. This division is crazy. And now Michael Chandler, this fresh, this fresh meat just coming in here, you know, um, from another, like, uh, from Bellator, you know, sort of mixing it up for everyone. So, and he has a lot of self-belief, Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler really thinks that he's, that he can be the champ and he has I mean just hearing him talk like he, it sounds very believable like you know it's not like this fake sort of thing that he's just like trying to prop himself up but, like he really believes that he can be not only Habib but that he is going to be the champ in the very near future um so yeah let me know in the comments what you think thanks